Hi, my name is Sandy Simpson from Apologetics Coordination Team. And today I'd like to do a DVD on an article I wrote called Generic and Specific. Two reasons why the Bible translation societies putting the names of supreme beings in the Bible translations is unbiblical. Now I wrote another article called Blasphemizing the Bible. And in it, I gave a number of examples of how a lot of modern Bible translation societies are putting the names of supreme beings, quote unquote, in the Bible in the place of God or YHWH. In this article, I'm going to examine two of the excuses they make for making those substitutions in the Bible in many different languages today. First of all, they claim that God has many different names and therefore they think they're justified in putting the names of various gods of various cultures in Bibles as long as they're considered supreme beings, quote unquote. The second excuse they give is that the names of the gods they are placing in the Bible are generic terms for God, like the words God, Theos, Dios, or Elohim. By generic, I mean a word that can be used for any deity, whether of the one true God or other false gods who claim to be God. Now, I will go through both of these excuses and show that they're both wrong and unbiblical. Therefore, the Bibles they've translated with the names of other gods in them, or names they claim are generic, prove they have blasphemized those Bibles. So, first of all, does God have many names? The claim that God has many different names, therefore any supreme being, being's name can be used for God, is false. God has one name that he revealed to Moses. Exodus 3.14, And God said unto Moses, I am that I am, YHWH. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. The Bible says over and over again that any true believer needs to worship God in his name, not in his names. The Bible never teaches that in fact, that in fact it forbids it for true believers. There are many instances of calling for the worship of God in his name, but none stating in his names. 1 Corinthians 16.29 Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and there... Come before him, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Psalm 29, 2, ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Psalm 86, 9, all the nations you have made will come and worship before you, Lord. They will bring glory to your name. Revelation 15, 4, who will not fear you, Lord, and bring glory to your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Psalm 96.2, sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Psalm 116.13, I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Isaiah 65.1, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. I was found by those who did not seek me. To a nation that did not call on my name, I said, Here am I, here am I. Acts 4.12 Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. God's name is YHWH or YHVH, revealed first to Moses. There is no other name of God. God's son is Yeshua, based on YHWH. In English, we often use Jehovah and Jesus, which is fine. Any other names of God are actually titles or attributes of God attached to his name, YHWH. God's name is I Am, YHWH, Yahweh in Hebrew or Jehovah in English. That's the name he told Moses when he asked and the name by which he must be worshipped. Other names in the Bible for God are not his name, but attributes added to his name to describe who he is. Let's look at those. Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Jireh. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Rophe, the Lord who heals. Exodus 15, 22 through 26. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Exodus 17, 15. 
Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord who sanctifies. Leviticus 28. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. Judges 6.24. Jehovah Elohim, which is Lord God. And there are many uh, references to that. Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord our righteousness. Je uh, Jeremiah 23.5, 6 and 33.16. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, Psalms 23. Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there, uh, Ezekiel 48, 35. And Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, and there are many references to that. These quote unquote names of God are his actual name, YHWH or Jehovah, with an attribute added to describe him. The name of God, the one, what, eternally existing, and three who's, is YHWH. Now let's deal with some other attributive descriptions of God, which are not his name, but describe who he is. For instance, Adonai, an attributive description for God, meaning Lord, in our English Bibles. It's also used 215 times to refer to men. The first use of Adonai was in Genesis 15.2. And there are many other references to that. He's also called shepherd, and that's an attri attributive uh, description. He's also called judge, an attributive just description of, of what he does. Abhir, an uh, attributive description meaning mighty one or to be strong. He's called the branch, an attributive description meaning the branch. Uh, kadosh, an attributive uh, description meaning holy one, and uh, or the holy one of Israel is used 29 times. Shaphat, a, a, an attrib attributive description or the judge. Kana, an attributed description meaning jealous or zealous. Palet, an attributive description meaning deliverer. Yesha, an attributed, an attributed, uh, uh, attributive description meaning Savior. That's where we get Yeshua, uh, Jesus, and uh, it harkens back to YHWH. Messiah Christ or Mashiach is an attributive name meaning Anointed One. Gaol, an attributive description meaning Redeemer to buy back by paying a price. Magen. An attributive description meaning shield. Stone, an attributive description again. Ialuth, an attributive description meaning strength. Sadiq, an attributive description meaning righteous one. Uh, Zur, an attributive description meaning God our rock. And it, uh, Atik Yomin, uh, which is Aramaic. An attributive description meaning ancient of days. Melech, an attributive description meaning king, and there are many references to that. The first and the last, an attributive description, of course, meaning that he is from eternity past to eternity future. And finally, the angel of the Lord, which is an attributive description, and it's seen in the theophanies or pre-incarnate appearances of the Son of God, in the Old Testament. We then need to move on to the El attributive descriptions. Elohim is a generic term for God, which can be used for the true God, who is a trinity, or angels or fallen angels. Elohim is a grammatically, is grammatically similar or uh, plural noun for God or gods in both modern and ancient uh, Hebrew language. In the context of YHWH, it is attributive of who he is. And so attributes were tagged on to El or Elohim. El is a generic term for God in uh, Middle East, uh, like God in English. And it was actually used for both the true God and for the false gods in Canaan. Elohim is a plural form of El, also meaning God. Uh, and Elohim occurs 2,570 times in the Old Testament, 32 times uh, in Genesis 1. God is creator, preserver, transcendent, mighty, and strong. 
Jonah used Elohim almost exclusively. There's also El Shaddai, the generic term for God with an attributive added meaning, God Almighty or God All-Sufficient. El Elyon, the generic term for God with an attributive added meaning, Most High, or to go up. El Olam, the generic term for God with an attributive meaning, uh, which is everlasting God or God of everlasting time. El Berith, the uh, generic term for God with an attributive meaning, uh, God of the covenant. Um, also El Gibor, the generic term for God with an attributive meaning, mighty God. El Roy, generic term for God with an attributive meaning, God of seeing. We also have the general word for God in Greek, Theos, a general Greek word for God as, in, as, as the word in English, God. And it's capitalized in the, when it's capitalized in the Bible, it's actually referring to YHWH. There's only one name of God, YHWH, Yahweh or Jehovah. There are many attributive names given to each person of the Trinity by which we may also worship God, as we may worship Him by naming His attributes. Of course, there's Father, the person of the Father, which is an attribute of YHWH. Son, the person of the Son, which is an attribute of YHWH. They're both God. Separate persons, both God. There's Messiah or Mashiach, which is the Anointed One. There is Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit, which is an attribute of YHWH. The reason Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are attributive is that it spells out their position in the Godhead. For instance, my name is Sandy Simpson. It's not father, even though I am a father, and my children can call me that. Therefore, we can conclude that using a word like Allah in the Bible is ruled out, because it's not the name of YHWH, nor is it an attributive name attached to YHWH. It's actually the name of a specific deity from Babylon that was first used by Muhammad. So what is the oldest reference to Allah discovered in antiquity? Who was he and what did he represent? I found some interesting information on that. The answer should shock many in the scholarly community. The oldest reference to Allah, according to Kenneth J. Thomas, was discovered in northern and southern Arabia, dating back to the 5th century B.C. Um, and he was citing the work of F. Uh, v. Winnet, a study of uh, Leonite and Thamudic uh, translation, uh, inscriptions. But new research linking Allah being worshipped as a deity can be found in the epic of Athar, um, Atrahasis, uh, chiseled in several tablets dating to around 1700 B.C and was not found in uh, Arabian records, but in Babylonian records. What should shock historians and the theologians alike is that this much older reference to the literal name of a deity called Allah has never been linked by any of the experts in Assyriology who have written on the subject, or any of the translators of the Atahar, um, uh, Ata Atrahasis epic. Even more troubling for Muslims today is that this deity was described nearly four millennia ago, millennia ago to be a god of violence and revolution. The beginning of the epic of Atrahasis describes Allah as how all of the gods labored endlessly in grueling work under the rule of the patron deity Enlil or Elil. So, we have references to this false god going all the way back to Babylon. Now, let's also look at the topic of supreme beings uh, being generic terms for God. The uh, claim that terms like Allah are also a generic term for God are specious. There are two issues here. Number one, can the word Allah be used in place of YHWH? And number two, can Allah be used in the place of a generic term for deity such as God? Now as to the first case, the Quran defines Allah 
as a oneness deity who has no son. Therefore, he cannot be, by their own definition, YHWH. YHWH is God's name, not Allah. And in the second case, Allah is not a generic term, such as God in the Bible, uh, in, in English Bibles, as it refers to a specific false god with roots back as far back as Babylon, and one of the hundreds of gods worshipped at Mecca from which Muhammad chose Allah, thus creating Islam. If Bible Translation Society had simply looked at the Arabic Shahada, which is their statement of faith, their declaration, they would have discovered the generic term for God there. Here's what it says. There is no God but Allah. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The word used for Arabic for God is Illah. That's a, with a small g, God. And for God with a big G, to them, it's Il Allah or Allah. So they use the term Illah to refer to deity, which could be used to refer to either the true God or a false God. The fact that the Bible Translation Society put the word Allah in the place of the generic term for God in the Bible is then completely erroneous and misleading. And you know what they're doing? They're basically following the agenda of Don Richardson, YWAM, and others who are using the names of false supreme beings in many cultures and Bible translations in order to attempt to syncretize Christianity with all the world's cultures and religions. So Allah is not God's name, nor is it a generic term for God. And this, it should have, thus it should have been ruled out. Now, other supreme beings being used in the Bible because translation societies claim their generic terms for God are dealt with in my article, Blasphemizing the Bible. Some examples of supreme beings that are referring to specific deity and were not used uh, and were not used as a generic term for God until Bible translators mistakenly put them in the Bible would be words like Allah, for instance, Hananim, Bug, Jumala, Kami, and many others. Some terms that are generic and can be used to either refer to one true God or false gods, and which up until recently were used in Bibles, are in English, God, or uh, in French, de, Dio, um, in German, Gott, uh, in Greek, Theos, uh, in hung Hungarian, Isten, uh, in Italian, Dio, Netherlands, God, um, Norsk, Gut, uh, Portuguese, Dios, um, and Romanian, Dumnenziu, which is a generic term for God. Spanish, Dios, of, of course, and, of course, in the Middle East, Elohim. So, in conclusion, you cannot use the word Allah in the Bible. That's because it is, first of all, a name of a specific deity and not the name of God, YHWH. And number two, because Allah is not a generic term for God. So based on this article and my proofs, you cannot do what some Bible translation societies are doing and continue to do. I would recommend that the business of Bible translation be handed back over to missionaries who did a far better job of making sure that they were not putting the name of a false god in the Bible, but they were finding a generic term for God.